Hey everyone, uh, this is the week Skyward Sword HD comes out, and I do have uh, some news to, to kind of sort of talk about with Skyward Sword HD. Uh, nothing super major, but we'll at least mention it in this video. Uh, but this video is primarily going to be focused on uh, the Nintendo Switch OLED, because Nintendo has put out a statement in regards to the Joy-Cons, and while it's not a definitive one, and I'll explain why it's not definitive, I would say it's a pretty safe bet that Nintendo has changed absolutely nothing about the Joy-Cons on the Switch OLED other than the color uh, being white, or I think the other ones are black or something like that. Yeah, I, I just don't think you're going to see uh, any improvements in the major issue that's been plaguing Switch from day one, and that is Joy-Con Drift. And I'll actually explain why there probably isn't an update this time around uh, and why we could probably give up hope on this issue ever being solved, at least in the lifetime of Switch, by Nintendo themselves. Uh, but before I do, hey, we are giving away two copies of Skyward Sword HD, so uh, head down to the description to find out how to enter, and I wish everyone luck. All right, so before I get into this news, I just want to apologize again for not being on camera. I know I haven't been on camera a whole lot lately. I did do a live stream in one other video, but uh, I'm not like reorganizing necessarily uh, the studio. What I'm what I'm actually in the midst of doing, and I, I hopefully will have it done today, is I am sort of tidying up the studio a little bit. You're not going to see much difference on camera, but there's a huge difference off camera. Um, I got some stuff that hasn't been taken care of since E3 that needs to be taken care of. Uh, so I'm going to get all of that hopefully done here uh, before I stream tonight because I do plan to live stream tonight because uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about. Uh, speaking of stuff to talk about, let's first touch base on Skyward Sword HD. So uh, they released a new, uh, new-ish trailer I, I guess it's brand new it, it just came out uh for the switch and they highlighted a uh feature of skyward sword hd that we had technically known about but just kind of glossed over and that is that there's now an auto save feature so when you go to save the game at owl statues you can choose one of three save slots whatever that's really cool but now as you're running around the game there is an auto save so uh that's really convenient it is very much a modern day game convenience and it was pretty you know pretty stock standard back when skyward sword came out but it wasn't a feature in skyward sword so uh it's lovely to have that happen that is a, that is maybe potentially the biggest quality of life improvement to the game is auto saves so you don't lose progress or if you have to quit playing at any time especially when you're playing on the go i feel like anytime you're going to be on a platform that people might be playing on a train on a bus on the playground or wherever um you know you have to turn off the game sometimes or the battery might die uh having auto save is a big uh feature and i'm glad to see that added i know it was standard in a lot of other games but uh, it's glad to see it come uh that way all right so uh that's cool uh there, there was also um a, a smoother play experience um being teased by nintendo uh so the, the exact quotes here are uh, from Nintendo of America's Twitter. It says, Some changes have been made to the opening hours of The Legend of Zelda Discover Sword HD to make for a smoother play experience and to get you on your grand adventure to the surface world sooner. Here's one example where a mandatory advice from Horwell has been adjusted. And it shows a clip where, where Link talks to Horwell and it says, You should use this to climb if you want to. You can make the jump try climbing here. So it's more of a... If you want to do it, where, you know, it's kind of teaching you the, the controls, you can, but you don't necessarily have to, right? You don't have to do that um, in order to pr proceed. So it's one of those things where they tightened up the tutorial. So it's kind of like, look, if you know how to run with Link and, and jump, then you don't need to do this tutorial. So it's like an optional thing. Now, I assume a lot of people might still do it, especially if you play the, the game and you think you have to. Uh, but yeah. A lot of these things have been apparently tightened up, and that is another quality of life improvement. So, hey, there's some quality of life improvements for Skyward Sword. She comes out this week. Uh, probably going to sell a lot of copies. Uh, let's get then into the Switch OLED stuff, because I think there's a grander conversation to have here. Um, but let's let, let's look at a, a, a couple a couple things here. Um, so, according to a question asked of Nintendo, they were asked about the Joy-Con experience with the OLED model uh, by a number of outlets. This one happens to be GameSpot. And Nintendo's official response is this. The Joy-Con controller configuration and functionality 
did not change with Nintendo Switch OLED model, the Nintendo representative said. The configuration and functionality is the same as that of the Joy-Con controllers for the Nintendo Switch system. Which didn't really answer the question, because what they're getting at, what GameSpot and other outlets are getting at, and other outlets uh, were asked as well, and they just said Joy-Con controller for, for configuration functionality did not change. They're just repeating the same PR rhetoric, because uh, that, that, that's probably all they're allowed to talk about. And the big thing to me here is that they're not saying the joysticks haven't been replaced with a newer, better model. Uh, so you can't. Some people look at that and says, "Well, this, this this quote doesn't definitively make it that you know make it so that Nintendo hasn't fixed Joy-Con drift." But it also doesn't really suggest that they have either, right? Assuming that they have fixed Joy-Con drift uh, is a pretty big leap at this point. And I'm going to explain why it's a pretty big leap and why I'm fairly certain that Nintendo is just skirting around an issue that they don't even publicly admit is an issue all the time. There are currently, at least from what I was able to quick look up with just some Google searches, 34 pending lawsuits worldwide some class action some by actual governments against nintendo over the issue of joy con drift joy con drift that in every legal defense argument made so far by nintendo's legal team is something that doesn't exist so nintendo's legally denying that joy con drift exists meanwhile of course we all know that nintendo has been offering at least here in north america specifically the united states free Joy-Con repairs outside of warranty for any Joy-Con issue. They won't specifically say they're offering it because of drift, but after people started pushing back over drift, it's conveniently when Nintendo of America opened up the repair services for Joy-Cons. So you have had the president of Nintendo, Shintura Furukawa, uh, reference the drift, I think, twice ever in the last four years. Um, maybe recognizing, you could, you could say that he was sort of recognizing that it's a problem, but then not really ever um, outright saying that it's a big issue. So it's one of these things where there's so many lawsuits currently pending over Joy-Con Drift that it's at this point where Nintendo, one, can't really, un like, acknowledge it like if they, they they could announce hey we have redesigned the 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 the, the sticks in the uh joy cons but if they announce that uh that would be almost them legally admitting in some way that they did something wrong because there's so many pending lawsuits and nintendo is obviously hoping to win a majority of those lawsuits uh nintendo likely wouldn't change the joy cons even if they could because when you change the Joy-Cons in something that can also be used on current Switches, because, by the way, everything is cross-compatible, the docks, the Joy-Cons, everything is cross-compatible with other Switches, all the way back to the version 1 Switch, that means that you would be admitting that you changed a design in your Joy-Con uh, for a reason that doesn't appear to be obvious. Like, what, what reasoning could you change out the joysticks in Joy-Con except if there was a problem? Because you're not going to add a, some sort of, what are you going to add, a, a double-click functionality? Like, what are you going to do to your joysticks that you could argue is an improvement for the end user that is not related to Joy-Con Drift? So if you replace those joysticks with something better, which we all want to do, it would be almost like admitting legally that, yeah, we knew this was a problem the whole time. Basically just giving up on all those lawsuits. Because of that, I don't think, and this is without Nintendo saying anything, that the Joy-Cons on the Switch OLED are any different than the ones we already have. I think everything about them is the same except a new color. Uh, and that includes the sticks. And Nintendo, every time they're pressed on it, keeps saying the Joy-Con controller configuration and functionality did not change. But the Switch OLED model, the configuration and functionality is the same as that of the Joy-Con controller. They're, they're, they're trying to tell you that it's the same thing, but they're not going to sit there and get into the nitty-gritty details. Like They're being pressed on, hey, did you swap out the Joy-Cons? No, I, uh, we're, this is what we did. They're the same configuration and functionality. They're not going to come out there and be like, oh, we did that. So, like... A lot of fans that I see sort of still defending Nintendo on this are saying, hey, look, they didn't really deny. They didn't say they didn't. It could still be the same configuration and functionality, but have new joysticks, and they could ha get rid of drift. Absolutely. But on the flip side of it, they also probably wouldn't do that because they would be admitting in several legal cases that that's the only reason that they swapped out those sticks because there's no additional functionality or configuration that's any different. Think about that. 
when they say the configuration of functionality did not change, that means that if they swap those sticks for something that doesn't drift, it's not because it actually changes anything. It doesn't change how the sticks work, right? It doesn't give you extra functionality in games. So if that's the case, if they're not giving us new sticks because of that, then they would be giving us new sticks because there's a problem with the old ones. And again, that would make them automatically lose pretty much all of their lawsuits worldwide and cost Nintendo millions, probably hundreds of millions of dollars. Not that Nintendo can't afford that or that, you know, whatever, but they are a company that doesn't like to give up money if they don't have to, um, especially when some certain governments are actually involved in some of this. Not necessarily over the Joy-Con drift itself. Sometimes it's just involved with denial of, of, of right to repair and a whole bunch of stuff. Like there's been some weird lawsuits going on with some of this Joy-Con drift stuff, but all of it's linked to the fact that, hey, the controllers are drifting in the first place. That's the number one issue. That wasn't such a big issue if it wasn't a bigger issue than it is on other systems. Because by the way, drift is a problem in pretty much all controllers from the Xbox Elite controller to the PlayStation 5 to the Xbox One. Um, all the controllers have drift. They just don't have it to the extreme level of Switch or haven't have it as quickly as it does the Switch. And that's all because all these controllers are using a rather archaic form design uh, for the control sticks, which has always been disappointing, especially when you're spending $200 on an Elite controller. Uh, it's really disappointing to see them still continue to use that design when it's been proven there are better designs out there that are just more expensive. So when you spend $200 plus on a controller, you would hope Microsoft would put in the better designed likely to likely less less likely to end up failing and and drifting um designs but for some reason you know everyone just keeps sticking with the stock standard maybe because um it just has an acceptable level of drift like the drift is only going to happen after so many uses uh, it's not going to happen to a majority of controllers till long after a, con a console is dead etc etc et whereas like on switch it could happen in the first few weeks you have the platform it's pretty insane so anyways um yeah i i i just think that out of all the things they could have fixed with Switch OLED, this would have been a nice thing. This obviously would have been a selling point for a lot of current Switch owners to, to quote-unquote upgrade because, hey, look, we can get these Joy-Cons that maybe we can only get, you know, the ones that are included with OLED. Uh, but at the same point, that's a lot of lawsuits to give up. And I think, I don't think Nintendo's going to have a problem selling Switch OLED. Remember, I, I, I truly think Switch OLED is the long-form replacement, replacement for, well the current model of switch i i think that this is just going to be the stock standard model of switch next holiday not this year's holiday but holiday 2022 i think at that point the switch oled is just going to be the normal nintendo switch uh so yeah i don't think nintendo's really too concerned with trying to create a selling point when it's going to be a replacement platform anyways essentially a version three um and then we'll have to wait and see Obviously, if another model of Switch, I don't want to say a name, but if another model of Switch comes out someday, it'd be cool if, you know, Joy-Con Drift was addressed, addressed then. Probably won't be. So I think this is one of those situations where all of us want something fixed that Nintendo's never going to fix and never going to admit to. Um, at least not fully. They've sort of talked about admitting to it, but then backed off on it, and now they have a bunch of lawsuits. So it is what it is. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below. Um, yeah, you guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next video. Hopefully tonight for a live stream. If I get my, uh, office studio back together. Bye.